So you went to a swap meet, or you went to a junkyard, or you went out in your shed, and you found a carburetor. Will it work on your classic car? You don't know until you actually get in and take it apart and find out what's going on. Today we're going to use this, well, swap me thermoquad to demonstrate how to go through a brand new carburetor to make sure it'll work on your classic car. Today on DJ's Classic Garage. Now we're going to go off to the bench and disassemble. Okay, we've moved over to our bench. And we're going to go through this carburetor that you just picked up and you're not too sure of. So, what you're going to need? Well, first you're going to need a small screwdriver because there's usually tiny screws. A big screwdriver usually take the body apart. A nut driver with the appropriate side to remove any nuts, any bolts that are on here. Uh, I always use a quarter inch set because it's harder to strip or break things with a quarter inch, and I always use a driver. A pair of tweezers to remove small parts or put small parts back in. Needing those pliers, a uh, little more force is needed than tweezers. A punch in case, uh, to remove the accelerator pump. A pocket ruler. Now these are on Amazon, I'll put a link in the bottom. These are phenomenal, they're cheap, and they're the best way to measure the float heights or any other heights that you have to do on your carburetor. They're from zero to six inches. Uh, they have a little T on them. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. A little pick, hooked pick to help remove small clips. And a vacuum uh, pump. Uh, these are at Harbor Freight, they're not that expensive. It beats trying to suck on it with your mouth. Don't go there. Uh, and um, so you can test any vacuum pods on the carburetor. So first, visual inspection. We're going to check to make sure that all the linkage moves, which it does. We're going to check to see if the mixture screws turn in and out, which they do. This is something you should have checked before you bought it, unless you bought it sight unseen. This is very important. You can't do this. You will never be able to adjust a carburetor. Most carburetors are aluminum. These are metal. They're stuck in there. It's not pretty removing them. Um, check to make sure if it has a secondary air door that it moves. This one's a little not so good. And of course, step your step up pistons, uh, which are used in ABS, AFB, Edelbrock, Edelbrock Carter copies, um, the Holly Street Demon, Thermoquads, and Quadrajets. They're all shaped a little differently, but they all do the same thing where they meter how much um, gas is going through your primary jets at different operating scenarios such as at idle where they're all the way down, cruise where they're halfway, or wide open throttle where they're all the way up. So we've looked, we kind of noticed that the secondary door is eh. We noticed that this carburetor is missing its entire choke assembly and it's also missing its fast idle uh, screw step and everything um, so you'd have to source those parts from a, another carburetor or if it's newer and you can do it you'd have to buy those parts so you can use it on your car on the street um, if it had a choke on it what you would want to do is make sure the choke moves freely because if it doesn't um, you're gonna have to investigate why uh, usually the choke plate sits here on the thermoquad and most carburetors, right over the primary venturis, and they close like this when the engine's cold through a little spring action a thermostat on old style or electric where there's a coil inside and the coil when it's cold contracts and it pushes the spring up, the, the rod up, and adjusts this plate so you make sure all that is moving. 
Because that doesn't move, this carburetor will have no fuel, well, no air to go with the fuel when it's warm. Okay. So, okay. So now we've looked on the outside of the carburetor and kind of have an idea of what is and what isn't any good. We're going to check now accelerator pump function. And you can either pour some gasoline down there at $4 a gallon, <laughs> or you can take a little carb spray and you put it down in the vent tube. And I like to mix it with some just household oil. We're not running the car on this, but this this is very drying. And if it has a this has a uh, leather accelerator pump, we don't want it to dry out. So a little oil in there could be good. And push before you use it, you're going to clean this sucker out. I hope. And this is also a good way to see what parts you need before you start just ordering. Um, you're always going to start with a kit. But you never know, you may need small parts after that. Alright, let's see if we have any function here. Ooh. Now, you see, this one is a little gummed up. See, the side by my left hand squirts really well. The one on my right hand by the accelerator pump is not. There's a clog in there. You need to address that. But the accelerator pump itself is good. One less thing we're going to have to change when we, when we need to rebuild this. Okay. So, let's start on taking the main little clips off so we can get this body apart. Kind of use the, the pick here and get inside. helps if there's no pressure on it and there you go so it doesn't go flying across your garage or your work or your work area uh, next one you just do this one like this see simple fun all right so we're gonna unload the pressure on this and pop this rod up off out of here Sometimes they like to come out easy, sometimes they don't. There you go. This is actually way out of adjustment. It's been way too much. Okay, so all the linkages are off. Next, we have to address the step-up pistons. Or piston, in this, in, in this case. Uh, first, take the main cover off on the thermoquad. Boom. And then the thermopods have two little covers that cover up all the little passage, uh, bypass passageways um, on either side. And these are very, very important for the operation of your carburetor because if they are clogged um, at idle, your car will not have the correct mixture. It's amazing what these little bleeds do to keep the carburetor balanced. And they're very, very tiny. And I'll show you after I get this top off how you uh, clean them. All right, so now we have our little step-up piston with the two rods. And see the rods? You always inspect them to make sure that they they don't have any gack on them or, or they're bent or just anything abnormal that would cause them not to operate as needed. And also notate what number they are. These are 1966s. Uh, I hope that gets into focus. Uh, it's actually a very good rod to have. Sometimes you score real well. So we'll put these over here out of the way. Next, there is a spring in there. And we'll pull the spring out. And just like a lot of times when you buy stuff at a swap meet, or somebody gives you a carburetor, you find it in your shed, or you find it in a junkyard. Somebody's modified it, because that spring has been cut down. It's, the spring is supposed to be this tall. And they cut it down, and because they had a vacuum problem 
with this carburetor, probably from the cam or from it not being tuned properly. You'll never know. But you're going to take this and throw it in the garbage. And this is where you're going to have to have spare carburetors or spare parts because this is not usable. This is what you're going to need on your car to start with, at least to figure out where you are. Next, we're going to take the body apart. And all carburetors, uh, well, I'm guessing, yeah, all, they're aluminum, and you want to do it in a pattern. Thermoquat's a real simple pattern because there's two in the, the, the primary body of primary venturis, and then there's all around the perimeter. And what you do is you loosen the two in the primary venturis, and then you go and make a sequence like you're tightening a, a wheel or you're, you're tightening an intake, or you're tightening a head. You just want to make sure you do it evenly and smoothly. And through the magic of television, we're going to uh, come back and this top will be pulled off. Okay. Make, with these types of screws or any screws that go through the whole bodies on the bottom, I would suggest hitting them with uh, transmission fluid or nutcracker or anything that you use to get any type of rust or uh, binded steels, steel to aluminum, bounded, binded together to uh, make sure that it'll, they don't strip the bolts or you don't break anything. You could also soak the carburetor in a uh, carburetor cleaner bath and that should help also. Okay, so all the screws are out. So we're going to pull the top off. That's all the liquids we put in there and we'll start here okay so um, every carburetor is a little different uh, Holly's use two-sided metering blocks um, and the floats are in on the outside on the outboards especially 4150s are on the outboards of it um, a quadrajet has a central float some two barrels have a central float, like the uh, BBD. On the Thermoquad, you have two separate float wells, two separate floats. The driver's side has the accelerator pump, and the passenger side is just a float with, with a secondary pickup. And this is the primary pickup. And here's your Venturi's, and this is your passenger tube for your, for your accelerator pump, which you must always make sure is there. So, the visual inspection here is make sure all the pieces are inside that should be inside. Um, next is you check your floats. What I like to do is take take the pins out. Okay. They like to run. Pull the floats out and feel them for weight. If they're if they're the nitrile type like this, make sure they still feel light and not and not loaded down. Um, most times when you do a thermoquad or it's just any carburetor that has the option for plastic or brass, take brass. Uh, the brass are very easy to see when they're not good because usually they collapse upon themselves, or they uh, you can shake them and hear liquid inside. So always remember what side they were on. And the next thing to check is check your needle and seat. So I'm going to pick these, put these down here. Uh, take these pins off of here. Now these are needle and seat right here. Every carburetor is a little different the way the needle and seat comes in. This helps stop the flow of gas into the carburetor. So the simplest way to do it, see there's the inlet. Here's an inlet seat. 
is you go and blow. Alright, so that one launched itself, so that one's good. So we have to take that one, put it back in. So this one is actually good, it moves. It's not stuck. Is it stuck? It feels right. Alright, so then we hold down on this side. And that one came out. That one seems pretty good. You're going to clean, you, if you can get a good, and next we're going to test to see if they actually hold any pressure. So you blowing on it, or in it, Hold the uh, hold your fingers over uh, over the floats uh, over the needle if you can, and then take it out. These leaking, so these would have to be changed. I could hear air hissing by them as I'm pushing down, so these would always leak uh, gasoline while it's running. That is not good. On a thermoquad, here is the secondary spring for the secondary door. And you gotta make sure that is in place. Any type of any type of actuation for the secondary door, always make sure that it's in place and that it looks good. See, it's not rusted. It's nice. It looks like it moves free. Beautiful. And and on this carburetor, there's a vent. Um, check the rubber on that. See if it's soft. Uh, if you need to replace it or not with the rebuild kit. And there's an adjustment for how far this needs to be. You always make sure that's correct. Uh, the gaskets. I always spray WD-40 on my gaskets, so once I, you know, these gaskets are good. I got a, you know, I got this one apart, so you just spray it with WD-40, they will never stick. Okay, so, we have this, we can, now we can see our accelerator pump, you can see it, a little bit, it looks like a uh, rubber one. Leather has a little different color and texture. And you make sure to check all moves freely. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Alright, so that's what's in the main part of the on. Let's put the um, floats back in and then check the height. And then we'll check the accelerator pump when everything's together. Being the accelerator pumps works on this, I don't want to disassemble it because it works. You know, the first rule is if, it's, if it works, don't mess with it. This is where the tweezers come in handy. Put these back in. Line those up. And we're going to put that back in here. So now we, we, we know things we need to know for what kit we're going to need to buy, or what parts we're going to need. very important that you get these in right because the car will run quite poorly if it doesn't. Okay. So while we're here, let's check the height on these floats. They should be 29, 30 seconds. That one's high. That one is dead on. So on all floats, you bend in the middle here. Don't ever bend there. You support there. I don't want it pushing against the um, the needle and seat. We're probably gonna go back over. What are you gonna rebuild it? You're gonna double. But it's good to have them set. If they're good to use, have them set so you don't have to do it again. Okay, so we're so we'll set that on the side. Okay, so now we have the main body. Every carburetor is a little different. This is a three-section carburetor. 
But if there's anything that meters, any type of seals or anything, check them. Here there are well seals. Down here for the primaries. They're called X-rings. And I'll show you in a second if I ever get them out. All that food in there. All right, so as you can see, this is why you've been looking for to make sure that this was done right. These are soft, you can reuse these as compared to an O ring. See how the difference? These are much sturdier. We got one there, we'll put it back so we don't lose it. Check this for for uh, cracks. If it's you know phenolic body, always check for level. They will be level. The alum I'm more worried about the aluminum actually being bent than this. Everything's very very smooth. Goes right across. No weirdness. And then you check underneath on thermoclides. There are these seals. This one's been repaired. Uh, from the factory, these seals um, have a sealant that is a transfer seal for the primaries. And the sealant does not like ethanol gas, and it gets, or it just dries out over time and it leaks. And you use something like a JB Weld Marine, and it'll fix it up nice. So this has been done already. Uh, of course, this is why you clean your carburetors, seal the, uh, the junk that is in there, sand and whatnot. That's why you gotta just absolutely just either soak them or use an entire can of carb spray on them to clean them. Here's the primary jets, and you just make sure that they are clear. And um, a good way to do that, this up here, just take a piece of wire, you buy this at like Harbor Freight, and just put the put it down through the hole. And you should be able to go into the actual little hole. Very hard to do this with a camera, see? Right down to the bottom. See, it goes through here and it gets sucked up that way. Make sure all pieces are in there that are supposed to be in there, like this plate is supposed to be in here for the secondaries. Now we're down to the actual throttle body part of it the butterflies. You have your primaries, secondaries, and all four barrels. You want to make sure that everything moves. That all accessories is a step-up piston um, helper, pretty much. And make sure that that is moving up and down as, as it should, which it is. Then somebody on this carburetor, like I, we had figured out from the short uh, spring, had an idle issue, so they drilled holes in the primary. You could always JB weld those up. Um, there are other ways to, to make your car idle. This one does not leak. We had gasoline and carb cleaner and oil in there and it's dry. So this is actually a very good center section. Next, you wanna to check to make sure there's no movement um, because on aluminum carburetors, these are steel rods and from the pressure, it, will, it can cause a wiggle just a little air gap and you'll have an extra set of amount of air getting sucked in that's uncontrolled. And it's usually on the, on the primaries and you just have to rebush it and put Teflon tape in there. Uh, so that's pretty much taking it apart and making sure that it's going to be functional and now you know what you need. Um, I'll take this bottom gasket and kind of lubricate it with the WD-40, which I need to buy more of. So let's make sure that low looks copacetic. Um, make sure the springs aren't rusted, that they're where they should be. Make sure the linkages, once again, you can get a good look at the linkages, make sure they're all here. Everything looks nice. So then we're just gonna put it back together. Okay, so now, um, we're gonna put it back together. Um, put it back together. This is the opposite of disassembly. 
carefully turn everything over, make sure everything goes on smooth. This is for any type of cover, the lid comes off. Um, Hollies are different because you're putting at most of end to end. But anything like an AVS, an AFB, Quadrajet, uh, the Street Demon, always line everything up before you, you know, seal it together. And always, linkages love to move. So you have to snake them through. This. Okay. All right, this is the valve. This has to get lined up. The body is lined up. Okay. And so now we're good to reassemble it clip it all together and order the parts that we need to make this a good usable carburetor. Well, there you have it. We went through that junkyard swap meat found in the shed carburetor and we may we found out what we need to do and if we can actually make it work on our car. I really hope you got something out of that. Uh, thank and please like and subscribe if you did didn't thank you for watching to the end as always from dj's classic garage remember to always take your classics out you will make someone else's day doing it catch you next time